Hello guys, welcome to the voice blog. My name is Carl. Uh, I am a singer. I've been singing seriously on and off for about six, five or six years. Um, when I started I struggled a great deal. And I'm a solo solo artist. I sing in basically around London doing small shows really. I still feel like I'm developing and I am working really just to get my show to a professional kind of level. Um, I wanted to do the voice blog really just to create a platform for my ideas about singing and the goal really is to help people like me who are struggling with their singing to help them move forward and figure out really what singing is. Um, please question, ask questions, comments, subscribe and uh, I really want to interact with anyone that is interested in my videos and interested in my kind of approach to singing. Um, what I've found over the years is most of the information on the internet that is about singing um, is mostly about style and details there's not huge amounts of information in regards to technique, uh, contemporary technique. Um, a lot of a lot of stuff that does address technique is full of um, generally just faff, if that makes sense. It's not really broken broken down into particularly basic, easy to understand terms or ideas. Um, so my goal is to uh, talk talk about topics that are uh, kind of being neglected in regards to learning to sing and struggling with singing and really kind of shine some light on those kinds of things. So the topic today and for the next this today and the next the next video next week will be um, why is singing so hard? And today's, um, today's episode really is going to be covering the physical side of why singers struggle. And the second part next week is going to be about the mental side. Um, and at the end of that I will try and bring the two, the two sides together and just uh, you know, summarise really and hopefully to uh, bring them together and give you guys an idea of why singing is so hard. <laughs> so, first I wanted to ask this question, what is singing technique? So, I mean it seems like a simple question but it gets complicated quite quickly. So, as a short summary really, vocal technique fundamentally is the refinement of muscle coordinations. You can talk about a lot of things with singing, but the basic thing that separates good singing from bad singing on a physical level is the efficient use of muscles. Efficient muscle memory versus non-efficient muscle memory. What do I mean by this? Well, good singers don't use muscles they don't need. They have efficient technique they're using the muscles they need to use to sing and they're not using other muscles. Sounds simple enough. Struggling singers don't have efficient muscle memory so as well as using the muscles they do need to use they also have other muscles interfering at different points in the process of using their voice. So this causes the voice to jam up and it compromises the sound. The muscle memory that the struggling singer has developed is less efficient and therefore biomechanically speaking it is compromised. It is a compromised and inefficient use of the voice. Think of it as a continuum. At one extreme you have the singer that only uses the muscles they need in an extremely efficient way. At the, other, at the other side of the continuum you have the struggling singer who has 
all of these muscles interfering, the swallowing muscles interfering, and all of that interference makes singing difficult. It's a big kind of, they've got a big nebulous kind of um, uh, set of muscle memory that isn't specific enough, it's not, it's not um, refined enough, it's inefficient. So let's ask a question. Would you expect your arm to lift up when you move your leg? It's a simple question. The answer would be no. It sounds like a silly question, but the point is the muscles that singers often use at the beginning have nothing to do with the vocal process. Um, they're using muscles outside their voice to try and influence. This is my straining, struggling singer. They're trying to influence the process with muscles that aren't in the voice and don't have any impact on the voice, a lot of them. Now there is muscles that do have an impact on the voice, the swallowing muscles. If you put your finger under your chin there, in inside your jaw essentially, you would put your thumbs in there and swallow, you'll feel a muscle come down. These are the swallowing muscles and they will impact the sound and compromise the sound and a lot of singers if you actually a lot of singers will use those muscles to uh, to try and do something with their voice these muscles move the larynx up and have a negative impact on the sound so this uh, inefficiency starts to become a real hindrance and it starts to well, if, if the muscle memory is already in place and developed, it con consistently affects the sound and consistently um, compromises the singing, consistently makes singing hard. Struggling singers have developed an inefficient way of using their voice. It is not refined enough for easy singing. This happens over a long period of time as a young person makes choices about how they use their voice or in most cases they've just guessed because they have had no guidance with their voice and guess what, they guessed wrong. <laughs> so in order to improve that long developed inefficient muscle memory has to be abandoned and essentially a lot of us have to go back to the beginning we have to discover when we are using the wrong muscles, in what parts of our voice do they start to kick in and influence the process. You can start to feel when they're activating as you start to take time and care to feel what is really going on when you sing. Focusing on the present and what you are doing and what choices you are making as you go up and down a scale. You have to become intimately aware of what you're doing as you try and sing. You have to become aware of what muscles you're using, what muscles you've, you've implanted in that muscle memory. You gradually become aware of the bad muscle memory and you gradually begin to be able to abandon it for the right muscle memory. This transition takes time. So a huge amount of learning, learning to sing, is actually unlearning inefficient muscle memory that has been developed over time. And this is the crux of the physical issue that singers face. Undoing and changing long instilled muscle memory takes time and it cannot happen overnight. Depending on how inefficient your technique is and how long you have been using your voice in a certain way you will have more or less to undo. Someone who got closer to the mark on their first try as they developed their initial mus muscle memory when they were young will not take as long to refine their muscle memory towards good technique. Somebody who um, developed lots of outer muscle interference as they learnt to use their voice in regards to singing or their voice in general it will take them longer to undo that muscle memory and 
move towards an efficient, an efficient use of their voice. So that's basic technique. Technique is just the refinement of muscle memory and coordinations. Good technique is the absence of outer muscles, the absence of interference of, uh, from muscles that aren't needed in the vocal process. And again, this is a continuum. You have at one extreme the singer that's really struggling because they're influencing the process huge amounts. And on the other extreme, you have singers like um, Whitney Houston and Jeff Buckley, who um, essentially just didn't really have any, um, any outside influence from the outer muscles. They were just using their voice and coordinating their voice when they sang. And in between that, you've got a huge continuum of, you know, uh, struggling, struggling less, midly, middle struggling, you know, a decent singer, an average singer, a decent singer, um, a good singer, a more professional singer, you know, and then you've got your real top professional singers. All of those are moving toward, the, as, you, as they improve, they're all moving towards more efficient use of muscles, um, abandoning muscles they don't need, and the ultimate refinement of a voice is essentially an extremely efficient use of the vocal mechanism that has no interference from outer muscles. Um, that ultimately is what good technique is on a physical level. So that's it for part one. Um, part two we'll be talking about the mental aspects of singing and learning to sing and struggling with singing and um, I look forward to addressing that. <laughs> um, thanks for getting to the end of the video um, and please comment, rate and subscribe and I will see you next week. Enjoy guys, bye.